Hello and welcome to this video on character arc and development. You are the puppet master. I'll talk about that concept towards the end of this video. So, consider the following question, or questions for the matter. How has your life changed over the past year? How are you different as a person? Now, depending on when you're watching this video or what's going on, the answers may change or be different. I will tell you that I am currently recording this on June the 11th of 2020, meaning that we are now about three months into the COVID-19 situation where our world has been kind of turned upside down. Um, not only has there been the pandemic, and the social distancing, there's also been the um, social and civil unrest that has come with the murder of George Floyd, who um, then stirred up a whole bunch of issues with uh, police brutality and riots and such. Um, my life as an individual has changed significantly in this past year and not necessarily of my choosing um, but I have definitely grown and changed as a person. So why is that important? Well when we're looking at writing a book we need to look at our character's arc. Now some stories have just one main character sometimes they have multiple main characters but there's this concept of this arc where the character starts at one point and over the course of time they end up in a different point. I'm actually not a big fan of the term arc because it almost sounds like they started at one point and kind of ended up um, at the same point, <laughs> which is not necessarily the case. They could end up at a higher place, they could end up at a lower place, and the arc isn't necessarily a big nice curve. But the point being is that stuff happens. It's not just a flat line straight across. That is not interesting and it is really not realistic. So some things to consider when you're looking at your characters. After you've completed a story and you look at your main character, some things to ask are, first of all, who were they at the start of the story? What did they believe? And what did they want? So think about that from that character's individual thing. You know, who were they? You know, what was their major belief in life that drove them to do certain actions? And what did they want? What were they working for? Then, over the course of the story, what happened to them? Okay, did their beliefs get challenged? If the answer is no, then I would say that's a problem because often the obstacles that we face, um, it challenges our beliefs, our beliefs that any number of things could happen. For example, during COVID-19, the belief that toilet paper would be readily accessible for everyone at any time, that's uh, just something that I took for granted. Or I believe that gas would never get below $2 a gallon. That was something that I didn't. Or I didn't believe that I would ever have to be kind of working from home and couldn't really leave my house, okay? And then another question to ask is, did the character get what they want? Meaning that at the beginning, they wanted something to be happy, to get the, you know, promotion, to conquer the world, to, you know, be whoever they wanted to be. Did they get that? And then another question to ask is, is what they wanted at the start of the story the same thing as they wanted at the end of the story? So if they wanted something at the beginning, let's say they wanted to become, they wanted to uh, marry their, their crush, okay? Well, let's say the story is all about that relationship and how it grows and they end up getting together. Well, well chances are if they're together, and they've gone through all these challenges to get together. If what they wanted at the beginning is to get together with their person, and at the end of the story, 
well, they still shouldn't necessarily want that same thing because they're with the person. What do they want next? That shows growth. So let's talk about this as an example. And this is from my latest book. We're going to talk about one of the characters from um, National Bestseller. Um, this came out in January of 2020, which was before the whole COVID-19 thing. And it's told from two points of view, and we're just going to look at one of the characters. We're going to look at the character of Kendra. Um, and so we're going to go ahead and go back and look at these questions. Okay, so who are they at the start of the story? So Kendra is a, um, she's a science teacher, high school science teacher. Um, she's married. Uh, she has a little daughter who's three years old. She's um, a very much into environmentalism. Um, she believes that uh, we need to focus now on renewable energy because we are running out of oil and that we have actually, um, you know, her research shows that we have actually exceeded the amount of um, usage that we are producing. So it's, it's something called peak oil. And what do they want? They want to, she really wants to write a book that's going to help change people's perceptions on energy and to move more towards renewable energy. She wants to write this book that's really going to change the world. Okay, so that's kind of who she is at the beginning. Um, so what happens to her during the story? Well, her book actually becomes um, published. Um, and <laughs> I won't spoil all the difference. I mean, well, kind of a little bit, but it becomes a national bestseller and not necessarily for the right reasons. Um, her publisher, they kind of play up on the fact that, uh, they take her story and they focus on the, the worst case scenarios. They play up on the fact that she's a black female scientist, which is, uh, something that's not very common. And um, that's something that, you know, with the whole STEM push to get uh, folks to, you know, anyone to believe that they can do whatever they want to do. So they really kind of focus more on her as an individual. Um, did uh, Kendra's beliefs get challenged? Yes, absolutely. She believed that she just wanted to write a kind of like a scientific book to get the word out there. And it ended up becoming this media firestorm the media gets a hold of it and really starts hyping it and it kind of blows out of proportion people start hoarding gas um, gas prices skyrocket there starts to become civil unrest um, it's uh, you know she kind of yeah it's it's not been good okay um, did she get what she wants not really I mean she ended up making you know a good amount of money from the book but she becomes you know basically ostracized because people, and even herself, believes that she kind of caused this situation to happen. Now, I should say also at the beginning, she spent, you know, aside from being a high school teacher, she spent basically every free moment working on this book. Well, what she learns over time is that she has neglected her family, her husband, and her little daughter. Um, what she wanted the story was to kind of change the world, and to change, you know, people's ideas about renewable energy. And then what she really ends up understanding and learning over time is that, you know, if she, you know, it's okay for her to try, you know, if she were to change the world, what good does that mean to her if she is unhappy in her own family? If her daughter doesn't know who she is because she's working the whole time. Her dad, or her husband rather, uh, the, you know, the dad of the story, he works from home. Um, so he's basically raising the daughter. Um, and so she realized the importance of her family and that her world consists more than just of peak oil, but also consists of her immediate family. And really what she wants at the end of the story is a better world, not only for everybody, but also a better world for her family, which means that she cannot, um, you know, she has to find a better balance in her life. It's, it's a little more complicated than that, but that's the basic gist of the story. All right. So, and we talked about that. And then there's a, a, another side character, not another character named Stephen, but you have to read the book to find out more about his story arc. So some final thoughts. And I was thinking about this when it comes to writing and also being, um, you know, kind of dealing with uh, character development. I know for me personally, when I write, I do so because I'm trying to understand the world. And there's a lot in the world that I have zero control over. In fact, it's one of my 
uh, sayings that I tell my family and my employees and my faculty and whoever. I try to focus on what I can control. That's that's really where I have to keep my sanity. Yet when I'm a writer, I am the puppet master. I can control what happens in the story. Sometimes I have the characters do things that I wish I could do in real life. Sometimes I explore the different challenges that I'm facing and have them kind of be played out through my character. I can control the environment. I can control the world to an extent, okay? But it gives me a sense of control over the over a world where in real life I have very little control over many things that happen outside, you know, the walls of my house. Um, but one thing we definitely want to look at is when we are pulling on the strings of our character, we need to do so that reflects that concept of change and growth that we all face. If we don't do this, our characters don't change and they don't have these challenges and they don't overcome them, then we have an issue and that needs to be fixed before the story is completed. And there you go.